Poppy makes Sherlock cupcakes. For this, you will be needing your favorite cake mixture or your favorite recipe, jam, any jam you like, a cupcake core, or in my case, an apple core, a smiley face lollipop mold, yellow candy melts, buttercream mix, or your own buttercream recipe, a hand mixer, and cupcake wrappers with a fleur de lis print. Hey there, and welcome, or maybe even welcome back. So today I'm going to show you how to make Sherlock inspired cupcakes. I had this idea of making Sherlock inspired cupcakes for quite some time. And now that the new season is here, it gave me a good opportunity to make them. If you are just as excited as I am about these Sherlock inspired cupcakes, please give the video a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you'll never miss a thing again. My idea for making these cupcakes came from Sherlock's wallpaper. No, we aren't putting any wallpaper in the cupcakes. Anyways, if you have seen a previous season, you might know Sherlock's wall kinda looks like this. With the fleur de -lis wallpaper and the big yellow smiley Sherlock's pre-painted on. So the first step is to melt the yellow candy melts. You can melt them in the microwave or in a double boiler. I am just going to pop them into the microwave. If you have never done this before, please ask an adult to help you. Now that the candy melts are melted, you'll need to divide it over the smiley mold. I placed a sheet of baking paper under the mold so I won't spill any of the candy melts on the surface I'm working on. I'm not going to put a smiley face on every cupcake, so I'm not making more. But if you want to, you could. I used about 150 grams of yellow candy mounds and was able to make 7 smiley faces with that. Once you've divided all of your melted candy melts over the mold, just set it aside in a cool dry place and let it harden for at least an hour to 2 hours. Mine took about an hour to an hour and a half to harden. Now that the smiley faces are done for now, it's time to make the cupcakes. For this, I'm using half of this cake mixture, which gives me about 10 to 12 cupcakes. You can use any regular cupcake or cake mixture or recipe you like. Just make sure to read and follow the instructions real carefully. So as I said before, half of the mixture goes in, then some milk, vanilla essence, just because I felt like it, butter, and two whole eggs. Next, mix everything together or let the machine do the work. As I chose option two, I am placing the fleur de lis cupcake wrappers in a cupcake mold. I am also adding another plain white wrapper into the mold. I'm using an extra wrapper because the ones with the fleur de lis on them I've used before and they soaked up all of the butter and sort of became yellow. So to avoid ugly looking wrappers, just add a plain one on top of it. Now that everything has mixed, I am ready to divide the mixture over the wrappers. As I said before, I'm probably going to be able to make 10 to 12 cupcakes with this better. But first, I'm putting these six into the oven. Bake your cupcakes as you would do normally or check your instructions. After the cupcakes are done, use a wooden skewer. Stick the wooden skewer in the middle of the cupcake and if it comes out clean, it's done. The cupcakes now need to cool down. And while the cupcakes are cooling, they'll have time to make the buttercream. I am using a store-bought mix where I need to add some milk and butter, of course. And for some extra flavor, I added a tiny splash of vanilla extract. This mixture is basically 100 grams of soft beaten butter until smooth, then the mix for soft buttercream, 125 milliliters of milk, and a splash of the vanilla extract. I love using this buttercream recipe, but you can use any you like. Once the cupcakes have completely cool, it is time to decorate them. Take a cupcake and with a cupcake core or an apple core, take out the middle of the cupcake. 
don't throw it away. If you don't have any type of coro lying around the house, you could also take out the center with a knife. Next up, take half a spoonful of the jam, fill the cupcake with the jam, and place back the center part. I like to use a jam without big chunks of fruit in it. Do the same with the rest of the cupcakes. When every cupcake has been filled, you are ready to ice them. You could just give every cupcake a good dollop of buttercream, or you could pipe it on with a piping bag. I've used a star tip nozzle, but you can use any nozzle you prefer. To get the buttercream in the piping bag, I always fold a large piece of the bag over my hand and then scoop it in with a spatula. I am definitely not an icing queen, I've just let that one go. Anyways, I'd like to think I keep getting better and better at it, and now that all the cupcakes have been frosted, it is time for the last step. Grab your smiling mold and carefully pop them out of the mold. Don't forget to let them harden for at least an hour and a half. I've never used a mold like this before and was quite anxious of how it would work and if they would pop out easily. But I really was pleasantly surprised by how easy it was getting the sweets out. I just gave them all a tap at the bottom, flipped the mold over and out they popped. Don't they look cool? The details are perfect. Now all that is left to do is place them on a cupcake. And ta-da! There they are, the Sherlock inspired cupcakes. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and have fun making your own Sherlock inspired cupcakes. For more ideas and free printables, please visit my blog puppymakesdiy.blogspot.com. If you have any ideas or requests on what I should make or bake next time, please let me know in the comments down below. Also, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest. Click here to watch any of my other videos or to subscribe to my channel so you'll never miss a thing. Thanks for watching! And see you next time.